Now we're going to get to the sun and the moon. But before I talk about the sun and the moon, I do want to remind you, I did bring up the sun and the moon before. I said you can compare the Prophet and the companions to who? The sun and the moon. The Prophet is a constant source of guidance. And they are illuminated by the presence of the Prophet And by the way, the Prophet himself is called the sun in the Qur'an. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا He is a caller to Allah by his permission and he is a brilliant sun. He's called the sun himself. So I'm not coming up with this myself, it's in the Qur'an. So if he's the sun, who is illuminated by him? His companions. And all of us to this day. We are still like the moon. Now the thing is, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا The sun moves until a time where Allah will tell it to stop. The Prophet is not with you forever. The sun is gonna go. Allah is not just talking about the sun has a particular time and a particular schedule. That's true, He's talking about that. But on the spiritual side, He's comparing this to what? The Prophet is only here for a limited amount of time. Take advantage while He's still here. ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ That is the calculation and the decree of the one who has the ultimate authority. The one who sent him was Al-Aziz. تَنزِيل Aziz. He, his, his authority is that he will not stay forever. He will stay here as long as he gives them the authority to stay here. And by the way, when is he gonna go? He's the only one who knows. al alim Just like for the sun, he has authority over the sun. And one day the sun itself will stop too. Now, if that's the case, what about the moon? He says, as, as for the moon, وَالْقَمَرْ قَدَّرْنَاهُ manazil." We, we calculated it that it should go through phases. The Prophet is constant. لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فؤادك. So we can make your heart constant. But the believers are not constant. They go through phases like the moon goes through phases. And sometimes the believing community becomes so weak. حَتَّى عَادَ كَالْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ Until it becomes like an old little twig left of a, date, a palm tree. The little, little fine line. Like the entire sky is filled with darkness and the only light left is this tiny little bit. Sometimes the ummah will be so deeply immersed in the dark and there will be barely any light left. That is a little bit of a reflection of that sun, of that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But don't be depressed because when it gets to its lowest, that's when it rises again. That's the rise of the ummah again. So beautiful. The Sahaba are being told, your situation may be very weak right now. You may be very few in number. You may barely be visible. By the way, when the sun is, when the moon is at its weakest, it is almost what? Invisible. Isn't it? That's why we have moon fighting. <laughs> right? So, so, wasn't the believer described in the beginning of the surah as pretty much invisible? وَخَشِيَ rahmana bil ghaib. Someone who's on the far end of the city. You would never have known. Subhanallah. The rise and fall of the sun, the, 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 you know, is like the rise and fall of this ummah. And that's just the nature of it. So if you are thinking that this ummah, one day we will have everything, and everything's gonna be perfect, and this world's gonna turn into Jannah. Uh, not in the Quran. <laughs> that's not how it works. That's not what, what our aim is. Our aim is to make the best of whatever phase we live in. Whatever phase we live in, we make the best. And then Allah has His own decree. Allah is going to do what He's going to do. حَتَّى عَادَكَ الْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ لَشَمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَن تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ So beautiful. It's not becoming of the sun to follow the moon or to catch up to the moon. The right translation would be تُدْرِك الْإِدْرَاك To catch up. The sun is not capable of catching up to the moon. It's not, not capable. It's not appropriate for it to catch up to the moon. You know what that means? The sun has its own job and the moon has its own job. And the sun is not supposed to do the moon's job. The Prophet ﷺ had a job and his followers have a job. And they both have to do their jobs. One does not make the other one irrelevant or insignificant. They need it. They both need to do their own jobs. Has this been something that we already learned about in the surah? Wasn't it the case that three messengers came and there was a follower who started talking anyway? Because the messengers have their job, but that doesn't mean that the believer doesn't have his job. لَشَمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَن تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ وَلَا اللَّيْنُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارِ 
وَكُلُّنْ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ And all of them are rotating around in their own spaces. They're swimming in their own spaces. They have their own spheres in which they operate. Now when he says this, he's talking physically. Now imagine the physical image. The physical images of the sun and the moon having their own orbits, yes? And they don't crash into each other. But they definitely perfectly complement each other. And all of it to make things better for the earth. If the sun and the moon don't cooperate, the earth gets destroyed. If the believers don't take full advantage of their prophet, then there's fasad on the earth. If the, the prophets do their job, but if the believers stop reflecting, there's a problem. There's going to be tragedy on the earth. Moving on from this, when he says falak, it actually means a round trip too. Falak in Arabic, a full circle. Or an oval really, an, an oblong kind of circle. Okay, that's falak. Speaking of the word falak, he says wa ayatul lahum, and there's another miraculous sign for them. Anna hamalna dhurriyatahum, that we boarded their children on. Fil fulkil mashhoon, in ships that are loaded up completely. The word fulk is very close to the word falak. It's like speaking of fulk, let me tell you about another round trip. When a ship goes out in sea, it's hope, you're hoping it comes back one day, yes or no? Right? It's, you're hoping to make a round trip. Now what is this ayah doing here? The, the passage started with the earth, it's about to conclude with the, with the sea. So the entire earth, the entire planet. We began with the dead earth, now we're about to go into sea. And in the sea, Allah is going to talk about us going out into... He doesn't say you board onto the ships, He says they put their children on the ships. And He didn't even say their children, He said their future generations, they put them on the ship. Why did He say that? Because when people used to get onto a ship, it wasn't a two-day trip. They would travel for months, get on the other side of the world, and when they got there, they would settle there and they would make a life there. Yes? Maybe they'll come back or maybe they'll just become their new home. And if those young men, because they're, they're young men, they're young men and women, 18, 19, 20 year old, they went on the other side of the world and they settled there and started working there, making a living there. Their children and their children's children and their children's children are going to be settled where? Over there. So a young man traveling on a ship back in the day was like all of his future generations traveling. Because once he makes that move, and his kids, and his kids, and his kids are all going to be there. So you know when you got on that, sh on that plane from the PIA? <laughs> it wasn't you that was getting on the plane. It was your future generation. <laughs> right. Right. We going back. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's why you're here. Okay. You go back and you realize, ah, we ain't going back. Can we go back? <laughs> but yeah, isn't it the case that our future generations ended up here? There are two, three generations of Muslims here now. But this is what Allah does. And He's telling this to the Quraysh. You also have hopes in your children, so you send them on a journey. And when you say, by the way, it's so beautiful that the passage began with, Allah made pairs of everything. You remember that? But when a man and a woman are a pair, what comes next? Kids. Their kids are loaded onto ships. See, there's almost a conclusion, you know, it's progressing. The sun and the moon travel, which means days and months go by, and soon, soon there's a baby, and then the baby gets older, and he wants to make a living, and he wants to go off, and he's getting on a ship. There's a life journey inside these ayat. So cool. Now, speaking of every planet is swimming in its own orbit, كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ يَسْبَحُونَ means to swim. Speaking of swimming, let's talk about the ocean. He just transitions, he segues into from one image to the next. Now what you're thinking is, if you can't imagine what it must be like for the earth to be floating in the universe, and the moon to be floating, and the sun to be floating, the closest thing to that you can imagine is what? Your ship in the middle of the endless ocean just floating in the middle of nowhere. That's a sign for you, of what goes on up there. How, how delicate you are, how insignificant you are, how easily you could be drowned. How ins the sun is really significant to you, but to Allah, it's just like a ship in the middle of the ocean. He can just tip it over, drown it. He can just do whatever with it. It's nothing to him. So now you're in this ship, al mashroon that are, you know, that are full, shahana safina mala'aha, to fill the ship with everything. Some people say this is a reference to, to uh, uh, Nuh alayhi salam. I do want to tell you something here. That is a long conversation among Mufassirun. For us, it's going to be a short conversation. For some reason, the Quran in this surah, 
comes close to talking about Musa alayhi salam and comes close to talking about Nuh alayhi salam but doesn't do it. You know when there were two messengers sent to a nation? The closest to that you get in the Quran is what? Musa Harun to one nation. A man came from the far end of the city. The only other story where a man comes from the far end of the city is what? Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam. At the end of that story, they were put out like a fire is put out. You remember that? When you, what's the easiest way to put out a fire? Water. How was, the, how was Fir'aun taken out? Water. Even though there are differences, there's a third messenger in this one. So there are some differences. But it comes close to what? Musa alayhi salam. Then you come here, we boarded their children onto ships. What does that make you think of? Nuh alayhi salam. And both of them have something in common. Their nations were destroyed by flood. They were drowned. And this is going to be uh, important. You're going to be put out like water. Meaning Allah is telling the Quraysh, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the desert, I can do anything. <laughs> I can do anything. SubhanAllah. Anyhow, I do want to highlight one thing here. You know, Why do people put their young men and women onto ships, onto airplanes? Why do they do that? To send them off to college, yes? To send them to get a job, to get a PhD, to start a career. All their hopes are tied into this son who is in another land, into this daughter who's finishing her med school, living in another city. The mother's losing sleep every day because she's got hopes in her what? Future. Her future. Allah says, when you lose sight of the akhirah, when you have nothing to look forward to in the next life, then the only future you think of is your own children. We should think of our children. But you know the Quraysh, the greatest future they ever thought of was what? There is nothing more. That is the furthest extent they'll ever get. You know? This is the furthest. They can't go any past that. They can't think any past that. I want good for my kids too. I want them to get a good education, I want them to get a good job, but you know what? I want their guidance more than anything else. Anything else. You guys are putting some of your kids in good high schools because they are from good school districts. So the math, science, English scores are high. But the moral depravity of those schools is lower than human civilization has ever experienced in its entire history. But the math science scores are really high. <coughs> Homosexuality is being celebrated. An overly sexualized culture with music videos that are almost pornography is being shared constantly. Facebook is becoming more and more and more explicit, openly. Mobile devices are now tools that are <coughs> predominantly being used to promote shamelessness. And we're buying our kids new iPhones because they got a good score on math. So they can get into a good school. We are feeding their minds and ripping their hearts out. That is what we're doing. That is what we're doing. They're becoming really smart and they're going to be doctors. But they are going to be materialist, almost non-human. They're not going to have any spiritual life left inside of them. And you know who did that to them? Don't blame the kuffar. Don't blame the kuffar. You want good for your kids? Good, want good for all of them, not just their physical being. All you want for them is to make money, or to make, you should be able to say, I raised a doctor, or I raised a kid who's got the top scores in this or that, and you never concerned yourself with their spiritual well-being, their character well-being, their ethical well-being, their moral well-being. There's a tragedy, and on the other hand, then you have some other people. I want to protect my child, I want it to be a Hafiz. He doesn't go to school, he just goes to school. And then he's going to become a Alim. And after Alim, I don't know, Fadil. After Fadil, maybe Farig. I don't know. <laughs> but he's going to, I'm going to keep him away from the, this Kafir society. I'm just, oh, I'm going to Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. And let me tell you something about that young man who is completely surrounded in the masjid environment and knows nothing about the world outside. He knows nothing about the world outside. Because that is the world of kuffar. What you've done to this child is the equal, equal injustice. You have fed his heart at the expense of feeding his 
mind. Does Allah ask us to pay attention to the world around us? Did you know that in Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah talked about business law, business law, the guy who knows how to write the contract must be a lawyer or a, at least an expert in business. He says, فَلْيَكْتُبْ مِمَّا عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهِ He should write based on what Allah taught him. The guy who understands how to write business contracts, his education, Allah says, I gave it to him. The Qur'an says, عَلَّمَ Quran." He taught the Qur'an. And the same Qur'an says, business law was taught by Allah. This is a, some non-Muslim guy, he's a katib, who knows how to write contracts really well, and Allah says, I educated him. The Qur'an does not make a distinction between religious education and worldly education, what you like to call secular education, because all of it is ayat of Allah. When you cut the ayat of Allah, we're going to study the ayat of revelation, but not the ayat of the world around us, and not the world, not the world of history. There were three ways to the truth, front, back, and top. And now you say, I just want to learn the top, I don't want to see the front, I don't want to see the back, then you know what? You're not getting the full picture of the truth. We need to find a balance in human education. This is the tragedy that we've done to our kids. We have hope in our kids, but man, even if this kid does go to a madrasa and mashallah becomes a alim, I'm happy for him. But when he comes to college one day or meets a college student, and then he has one conversation about Richard Dawkins. He has one conversation about evolution. What's he gonna do? Where's he gonna go? We haven't even prepared them for the intellectual challenges against Islam. This is our responsibility, people. We have to do it. We have to do it. And inshallah, maybe if we have time at the end, I'll rant more about it and tell you what I think. But anyway, وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ Not only did we create these ships for them, we created for them. مِمِّثْلِهِ Just like it. مَيَرْ كَبُونَ What they ride themselves. The Arabs also ride something. The Arabs ride the camel. And the camel is called Safinatu Sahra, the, the ship of the, of the, of the desert. So they say they drop their kids off on the ship and then they get on their desert ship. But also the ayah says we created for them just like it, what they are going to be riding. Allah says I've created ships so far for you. But there are other things I'm going to create for you. Now they didn't know, we know, trains, airplanes, satellites, hot air balloons, God, you name it. All of that is actually something Allah says He created. But I thought engineers created them. What about the Wright brothers? You know, they're not the wrong brothers. So why, why are we, you know, so... How do we reconcile that? Allah is saying, by the way, that all human creativity, all human creativity is accredited to the one who gifted you with that creativity. The idea you were inspired with was actually inspired to you by Allah. You know, the, the app developer, <laughs> you know, the biochemical researcher who in their sleep got, oh, I should have put an O there. That came from Allah. Those neurons fired from Allah. That's in Ham also. You know, there are literally, there are inventors that I've seen documentaries on, inventors of great things who say, I saw it in a dream. I've been working on this experiment, it's been failing for years and years, and I saw it in a dream. Who created that actually? Allah. Did you know that the first ship that was made, according to us in our faith, the first ship that was designed was the ship of Nuh alayhi salam? And Allah says, وَاسْنَعِ الْفُلْكِ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Manufacture the ship under our direct watch. Allah is the project manager on this, this construction project. وَحَمَلْنَهُ عَلَى ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ وَدُسُرٍ We carried him on to things made of boards and nails. Allah even talks about the construction materials in the Qur'an. He gives them significance. Don't underestimate the value of a good, sound, worldly education, but it should never be at the expense of a spiritual education. An education in the seerah of your Prophet an education in the Qur'an, an education in this deen, in its shara'i', in its ahkam. Now, وَإِنَّ شَأْ نُغْرِقْهُمْ If we wanted, we would drown them. In the middle of the sea, we drown them. فَلَا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ Then they wouldn't have any cries to them. You know what this image is of? There's a ship in the middle of the sea, and it tips over, and what happens? They're drowned, and they're screaming, Help! There's no cry to be heard. Walahum yunqadun. They're not going to be the ones that get rescued. They would completely be ruined. They're completely drowned in the depths of a dark ocean. This is the second time we've seen someone drowned in the depths of darkness. The first time was when there was a wall in front and a wall behind and a lid on top. 
And now they're all the way in the bottom of the ocean. Illa rahmatan minna. And the only reason we don't do that, actually, the only exception is out of an act of loving mercy from us. And so they may enjoy life and use things until a very limited time. I'm not going to crash your airplane just yet. You know what Allah is saying? Allah doesn't cause the airplane to crash. Allah causes it not to crash. It is, its, its default position is to crash. The one keeping it in the air is Allah. The default position of the ship is to what? Sink. The one keeping it afloat is Allah. People have the wrong picture. They think it's the, you know, just like the messengers, they think the messengers came as a punishment. Or Allah drowned the ship. No, it's actually Allah Azza wa was the one keeping it afloat. He's the one keeping it where it should be. This is the image of Allah Azza wa Illa rahmatan minna wa mata'an ilaheen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching these videos. If you'd like to continue to support Quran Weekly, please click the link in this video.